What's up guys? Welcome to the kickoff. My name is Marco. I'm a certified soccer referee and I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about the laws of the game so you're ready to kick off. Today we're going to cover law 4 which covers the player's equipment. As referees, our number one priority is the safety of the players. A player must not use any kind of equipment that's going to bring harm or danger to himself or any of his other opponents. All items of jewelry such as necklaces, earrings, nose piercings, anything you can imagine for jewelry is not allowed. Each player and substitute must be inspected prior for them entering the field of play. If it's found out that they do have a permitted item, the player must be removed, correct his equipment, and then expected before he comes onto the field of play. If that player is found to have that item again or refuses to comply, he is cautioned. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the rest of the player's equipment, which falls under the category of compulsory equipment. This includes a shirt with sleeves, shorts, shin guards, socks, and any tape on the socks, which have to be the same color as the sock itself. Shin guards that have to be the appropriate age and size to cover enough of the shin for added protection. And of course, footwear. Especially with footwear, guys, you have to be careful and watch the studs part. That's these right here, okay? Make sure each player is gonna have a different set of footwear. And as you notice, there's gonna be a different set of studs for each one. And we have to make sure as referees that we check this equipment, especially at the younger levels, to make sure that none of their studs is dangerous. Sometimes you could find metal studs, which are permitted, so long as they're not serrated, sharp, or can cause a danger or harm to his opponent. Now, it may happen during the course of a match where a player loses footwear or shin guard during the course of play. It is recommended to have that player fix that issue before the ball goes out of play and is restarted. If it happens where a player loses a shoe or a shin guard during the course of play and a goal is scored, the goal stands. Now we got team colors. We gotta make sure both teams are wearing completely different colors so you can tell them apart from each other and from the match officials. Each goalkeeper must wear a color that distinguishes themselves from all other players and match officials. If both keeper shirts are the same color and neither of them has a different color to change into, this is permitted and play is allowed to continue. If players wear undershirts or under shorts, sliding shorts, both of these items have to be of the same color or predominant color of the primary jersey that they have and the primary shorts that they have as well. Now we have other equipment that are permitted. These are non-dangerous protective pieces of equipment. For example, headgear, face masks, arm and knee protectors that are made of soft materials are permitted. Even goalkeepers are allowed to wear hats, assuming that the bill is soft and not dangerous to any other opponent. Now electronic communication is permitted by team officials, trainers, and support staff, so long as it is used for player wellness and safety. Players may not use communication devices. In today's age as well, you may see electronic performance trackers worn by players. This is used to track their speed, movement, and other physical fitness data that may be used for training purposes. These are allowed so long as they have these seals. Now when it comes to slogans, statements, images, or advertising, the player's equipment may not have any personal, political, or religious statements, nor can they reveal anything undergarment that has such statements, nor can the player have any slogan that is considered offensive, personal, derogatory, or abusive. The game of soccer should be played for its sport and not be held as a platform for any political, religious, or personal statements. Now let's talk about offenses and sanctions. For any offense, play need not be stopped. The referee tells the player to leave the field if he hasn't already corrected his equipment, correct it off the field, have it checked by another official, make sure it's all set, ready to go, before being beckoned on by the referee. A player who leaves the field to get his equipment corrected or changed must have his equipment checked by a match official for being allowed to enter the field of play. The player may only re-enter the field with the referee's permission and this can happen during the run of play. A player who enters the field without permission must be cautioned. And if play is stopped to issue the caution, the restart is an indirect free kick at the position of where the ball was when play was stopped. Unless there was interference, in which case a direct free kick is awarded at the position of interference. Well, that covers it, guys. Thank you for joining me on the kickoff where we covered Law 4, the player's equipment. Come back tomorrow where we talk about Law 5, the referee.